Hi YouTube and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I'm gonna cover network policies, what they are, why you need to use them, and how they work. I'm also gonna cover a very subtle change that Snowflake slipped into the documentation I only discovered this last week called network roles. It actually changes the way that you now need to implement network policies. And so if you stay to the end of the video, I will show you what that means and actually how we implement it in Snowside. Now let's start with the Snowflake documentation because there's been a few updates. I'm not entirely sure exactly when these were made, but as I mentioned at the top of the video, I discovered these just last week when guiding a existing client on how best to implement network policies to secure their environment. Now, what is a network policy? Well, it allows you to restrict access to a range of IP addresses so they can't access your Snowflake account to get to that login screen, to get to that level of authentication. Now, obviously by default, people can't access the data because they still need to authenticate onto your Snowflake account, but it does prevent them from actually, if they had the URL, access in that login screen. So it provides another level of security around your Snowflake account. So it's often recommended to do this. Now you can use SQL to work with network policies as the documentation specifies. You can also do it in Snowsight with a preview feature and that's what we'll look at with the brief demo at the end of this video. So network policies, now you used to, in the old type ways of doing things, specify a allowed IP list, so a list of IP addresses, as well as optionally a blocked list of IP addresses. That was directly specified in the network policy itself. And to give you an indication of what this used to look like, this was the way that you could only specify how a network policy worked. You create a replacing network policy, give it a name, you've got your allowed IP list, which was mandatory, and then optionally you could specify blocked IP lists as well. You would create that as a schema object within a database in Snowflake, and then crucially activate that to bring it to life and help secure your account. Now, the subtle change that Snowflake introduced was something called network roles. Now, the old way of doing things, as it specifies here in the documentation, will still work, but it also says best practice is to avoid using both network rules, the new edition, and network policies. So how it works now is if we go to this area for network rules, this is a schema level object again, but it allows you to group IP addresses or network identifiers together in logical groups, and then you specify these to work with network policies. So the new way of how it works is you create your network rules up front, you gather your network identifiers together. You've got a few different modes and types, which we'll see and touch upon in the demo in a second. Then you create your network policy, specifying your network rules that you want applied in either the allowed network rule list parameter or the blocked network rule list. Once you've done that, you activate your network policy and then you're good to go. So that's the new way of doing it. That's the best practice way. Let's now head over to Snowflake and to Snowsite and see how that works. So here we are on Snowsite, we're in the admin section, we're in the security area. Notice we've got network policies, network rules, both in preview. The first thing we're gonna do is create a network rule by hitting this blue button at the top right. We give our network rule a name. And then crucially, as I mentioned, it's a schema level object. So we pick our database, we pick our schema we wanted to create it in. We can add an optional comment. Here's our type. So we've got four different types. I'm not gonna go into these in all uh, details, but um, IPv4 is the most commonly used one to specify IP addresses. And then we've got modes. So we're ingress, incoming traffic into Snowflake, internal stage, traffic incoming to the internal stages within Snowflake, and then egress. So that's traffic coming out of Snowflake. We're gonna leave this as ingress, we could then specify, and typically we would specify our IP addresses. Notice that we don't need to specify it, it's not mandatory for the purpose of this demo. I'm not gonna to worry too much about creating one. The only thing this will prevent us from doing will be activating our network policy. It will give us an error because we haven't included our own IP address in that, so we would actually lock ourselves out. Let's create that network rule. Again, remember you can do all this in SQL as well if you so wish, or if you wanna automate these scripts as part of a deployment process. 
So this is our network rule getting created now. It'll take a couple of seconds um, just to refresh. There it is, so we've got our network rule. Now we can go to our network policy. Top right, hit network policy, we'll give it a name. Optional comment again. Now we can choose allowed or blocked. We can then pick our rule. So there's my network rule that we had before. We can click that. You can also click new rule and it will fire you across into the create network rule um, section that we were just in before. Um, notice that it's added our network rule. Then we can create create network policy. Notice that the selected role doesn't have the permission to perform this action. So then we need to go in, change our role because we're in as a sysadmin. So we'll go in here and for the purpose of this, we'll come into the account admin area. And then you need certain privileges, obviously, to create a network policy. You need that particular privilege. We'll go back in. We'll go back in to create a policy again. We'll add our role, we'll create that policy. Notice that it lets us do it now. I just wanted to show you that because you've always got to be mindful of the privileges that you have, but it's inactive. So by default, any network policy, and this was the same before the introduction of network roles, it would be created as inactive. You can come in here and you can activate it. This will give us an error, as I mentioned before, because we didn't add our IP address in there. So there you go. That's the, the subtle change. That's what network policies are. That's how network rules help you manage them. And that's the new best practice from Snowflake as well as how you use Snowsight to manage and implement those. Hope you found that useful. If you did, keep watching, keep subscribing. New videos come in very soon. Hey, it's Adam here and I just wanna jump in real quick and just give you the latest information on the Master and Snowflake program. It's now in its third year and it's doing really well and there's more people than ever showing interest and joining the program every single day as we enter the new year of 2024. And this has been designed really for people who are quite experienced working as an IT uh, data professional. Most of the members on the program have between 10 and 15 years experience working with commercial databases, they're very comfortable with SQL and all of the different terminology that goes with data warehousing and running databases at an enterprise scale. And so these people, um, they might have scratched the surface of Snowflake, it may have intrigued them, they may have no knowledge of Snowflake, but a lot of sort of Teradata, SQL Server, Oracle on-premises experience, and they want to know, crucially, how do they leverage all of that time and money that they've invested to get to the point in their careers they are today and leverage it for the cloud with Snowflake. So I designed the program exactly for those kind of people because back in 2017, when I first got my hands on Snowflake, I was in a very similar position. I had to learn through trial and error, testing out what worked, testing out what didn't work, and then coming up with a set of recipes that really worked in Snowflake to address common real world challenges. And so once I had those, I packaged those up and put them into this program. And this program is certainly not about theory. Of course, I introduced what the, the technology and capabilities of Snowflake does. But crucially, I tell you how you can package up Snowflake's out of the box capabilities to address real world challenges. I run through with live demos. I provide you with my code assets and templates to download and use within your own environments or use as a starting point to customize further. You'll get access to my Everest guide to help solidify some of the uh, the knowledge that you're gonna um, you know, be recipient of during the program as well. So three tif different kind of areas to the program itself. One is the on-demand um, training portal available 24 by seven with all those downloadable assets on. It's all video content produced by myself. So you know who's delivering that. You know what the learning style is gonna be like from watching these kind of YouTube videos. It's gonna be direct, it's gonna be to the point and it's gonna be enabling you um, get the maximum value for yourself, your career, and your organizations that you're working for or working with. You'll also, as a member of the program, get access to the private members only LinkedIn group. All our members globally who join the program get access to this. It allows you to ask any questions around the course, around Snowflake. And um, that could range from interview, question and answer guidance through to other tooling. Um, such as Matillion, DVT, Alation, Power BI, you name it, you can ask the question there and I will help you to the to the best degree I can. But of course, I don't know everything. 
the other members then can also join in that conversation and share their own unique set of experiences because everybody's on this journey together. Further to that, there's a weekly 60-minute group consultancy call, again, hosted by myself. You can come in and it's a different vehicle for you to ask questions and get guidance and support. Um, different vehicle than LinkedIn group. It provides live real-time feedback. Finally, it's a one-off investment to join the program, but once you're in, you are in for life and you will not pay a single cent or penny more to get access to all future updates to the program. And the great thing is we can... Um, drop things into the program as and when we see fit based upon members' feedback or based upon new features and services Snowflake are releasing to the market, which is very frequently. Um, if you don't know, Snowflake release new features every single month to the market. So we'll apply a lens to that and work out what's publicly available to Snowflake customers and what's going to be most impactful for our members to learn. At this point, you may be aware that I've offered a couple of books on Snowflake as well. And so you get the chance to work with me and help build this community out. In the program, we cover 10 modules. Within each module, there are a series of lessons going into real depth in each one. And we get to an advanced level of uh, knowledge. So we try to cover everything possible from a capability perspective within Snowflake. The Snowflake lessons are continually evolving, as I mentioned, as Snowflake grows and evolves as a product as well. And a great example of that is Module 10, Developing Applications in Snowflake. We've recently added a native application demos in there, so you know how actually to package up and create your own native applications. We've also got Streamlit um, lessons in there, where we hook into the Open AI API and actually query um, large language models in Snowflake. We also hook into the Snowpark API and work with Snowflake as part of those lessons. So loads of value, um, loads of great um, feedback, Here's all lessons, loads of great feedback from various um, valued members who are also part of the program because as I mentioned, once you join, you're in there and you continually get value from that and it follows you as you and your career grows. Some of the people I joined at the outset three and a half years ago still have access and still get continual value today. I hope you find that useful. If you want to apply, um, it's invitation only and I review all applications personally. So have a look in the link in the video description and I'd be really pleased to welcome your application to the program.